the 90s comes King and Storm. Storm. We are here to bring you the best comics of yesterday, today, and the best comics of tomorrow, next week. Well, for me, it's more like the best comics of yesterday, yesterday, but also tomorrow because I'm a time traveler. Don't talk to me about time travel. What do you know about time? Nothing. Other than my makeup is very 90s. Very, very 90s. But yes, this week we have found in the attic perhaps the best promotional material ever. Is there anything better than that? I, mean, I don't know. It's cut out Rob Liefeld cable. It's pretty dope. And Storm being that Jim Lee couldn't decide if he wanted to make Jubilee white, black, Indian, Asian. He didn't know. He <laughs> so was just confused. Like, it's Storm now. Yeah, you know what? So, yeah. But, uh, hope you all are doing pretty well this uh, fine Wednesday morning. We have lots of comics for you, as usual, you know. Um, they're not all really 90s, which, you know, I'm sure some of you will appreciate. Mm -hmm. In fact, I don't know if any of these are very 90s at all. That's wrong. And you know what? We're going to start with Savage Wolverine. Eat your words. That's right. This is Joe Mad from the 90s. Okay, he's, he's, he was probably born in the 80s, first of all. Yeah, he probably was, or the 70s, probably. Um, but yeah, Savage Wolverine, number eight, right? Yeah. I, Joe Mad's final part of his three-issue run with Zeb Wells. Uh, basically, this has been Ninjas, The Hand, Kingpin, and Elektra. Just beating the shit out of stuff for like three issues. Pretty much, It's yeah. amazing. And the Savage in Savage Wolverine... It's certainly reached oh, yeah. in this issue. In fact, it's so intense you might need to read it a little farther back. Um, but yeah, Joe Mad's doing the upcoming Inhumanity um, in December? I don't November, know. November? Something like that? The end of the year? With uh, Matt Fraction. With Matt Fraction, which looks very cool. So look forward to more Joe Mad. This week also sees the release of the collected edition of Five Ghosts, The Haunting of Fabian Gray. This is the pulp hit sensation from Image Comics, five issues, nine ninety nine. Chris Mooney, Mooneyham, and uh, Mooney Frank Ham. J. Barbier, with uh, colors by Lauren Affey, who has another book out this week, which we'll get to in a minute. Soon. Uh, but yeah, great design, great fun. I mean, one of the issues was blood for the spider god. Yeah, that was pretty much like the high point Do of my life. Do you get any better than that? Year. I, you know, I don't think so. Not really. Um, what am I gonna go with next here? <laughs> Because everyone needs to be reading this comic. And because I realized we're not selling as much, which means you people are not listening. How dare you not listen to us? I'm serious. Last issue had Matt Murdock riding around on the Silver Surfer's surfboard. That's almost as good as when Carnage took Silver Surfer's powers. That was some 90s shit. But Daredevil and the joke or the, the jester, prankster? I want to say the jester? prankster. I don't know. He's not in this issue. I don't know what Chris Sam was thinking. I mean, maybe this is the wrong cover. Um, but basically, this is a nice kind of uh, look into Foggy Nelson's unfortunate situation of having cancer. Yeah. And uh, you know, it's got Ant Man in it. There's also Hank Pym yeah. and his giant worker ants, giant which worker is awesome. Ants. Um, but really, I mean, I can't say enough about Mark Wade and Chris Sam on this with the colors by Javier Rodriguez. I mean, this is. Next to Hawkeye, this is probably... It's the best monthly the best, comic like, that comes out monthly. Yeah, that comes out monthly, because Hawkeye <laughs> does not come out monthly. Um, but it's just pure superhero fun. It's good. Um, and you should buy it, and you should listen to us. by by Daredevil. And here is... This is not the comic I thought it was. But let's go with this anyways. This is Thor, God of Thunder, number 13. This That's is right. kicking off the new arc from Jason Aaron and Ron Garney. Featuring, of course, Malkith the Accursed, who is the villain in the new Thor The Dark World movie coming out, I don't know when, actually. I Sometime soon-ish. It's happening this year, maybe, though. That's maybe right. next year, I don't really know. But it's happening. And get in on the ground floor, well, of the kind of revamping of, of Malkith. Um, he was created by Walt Simonson. Uh, originally, and if you so care, you know, search down those issues. Those are pretty cool. Walt, Walt Simonson Thor is always awesome. Uh, but they've got the same uh, colorist, Ives Forcina, who is doing Asad Ribic stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and it really gives Ron Garney this nice kind of like painterly feel. And there's a flying tiger. And there's a flying tiger, which, you know, shit. Um, from local artist Matthew Southworth and acclaimed uh, crime writer, novelist, all around good writing guy, Greg Rucka, um, comes the second volume of Stumptown. 
with uh, we focus on Dex Perios, who is a private investigator um, in Portland, where this takes place. And uh, this one features uh, sh the the made up band called Tailhook. Um, and uh, she's hired by the guitar player after her guitar gets stolen. Um, there's neo-Nazis, there's drug running, there's car chases that are really badass in this one. The last issue was pretty much all car chase. It was all sideways, which was cool. Um, but this certainly gets the Best Smell Award. These, like, the paper that Oni uses on these is really, really nice. It comes with a nice... You know, it's a nice package and everything. Bigger art. Um, slightly, you know, looks like retouch color maybe, but uh, great noir stuff. Very, very fun. Very good. We've also got from Dark Horse the first issue of four issue miniseries titled Buzzkill. About this superhero who gets really plastered and then blows things up, I guess. I mean, what's not it's things, I don't know. He's an he alcoholic. He powers from alcohol. Yeah, he's an alcoholic superhero, you know, and he just... <laughs> It's great because it opens up on an AA meeting and they go through the whole like, oh, you know, what happened to you? And he talks about how he gets superpowers and beats the crap out of people. And, you know, when that happens, would you stop drinking? No. You would probably drink more? You know, probably. Um, but yeah, for those needing a little bit more of a, of a medicated superhero this week. Um, the first collection of Star Wars. Not the Star Wars, just regular Star Wars, by Brian Wood and Carlos DeAnda. Um, this, I think, yeah, this features characters from the original trilogy. Um, I don't know exactly between what it movie it takes place. between Episode 4 and Episode 5. Does it? So, okay. New Hope and the New Hope Empire. And Empire. Cool. Um, but yeah, you know, I'm Brian Wood bringing his usual character-driven, you know, kind of plot to the side the fantastical world of Star Wars, Carlos DeAnda draws a pretty mean spaceship. Yeah, I gotta and say, a burly Darth Vader. And a burly Darth Vader. And what more? I mean, that's probably how you got the job. Can you draw <laughs> Darth Vader? Yes, no? All right, you're hired. You know, easy. All right, another awesome collection out. This is the origin of the Inhumans. And when you talk about the Inhumans, you have to do the double Kirby's. you got to do the double mm. Black Bolt. That's right. That's where his powers come from. I mean, no, it's not the tuning fork. It's a bit of a misleading title, because this is not just the origin of the That's Inhumans. True. This is, like, the first 20 stories of the Inhumans. Yeah. All by Stan and Jack. I mean, $40 for some of the best comics. I mean, like, it's just the first 100 issues of the Fantastic Four by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby are her, the template for all modern superhero stuff. For... I don't know, 40 years, 30 years. Um, and this has... The Inhumans were created in Fantastic Four as kind of a uh, supplemental character, or, well, race, and they've blown up. You know, and finally, after years of them being in comic book limbo, Marvel has really brought them back to the forefront. Um, you know, after Infinity, there's Inhumani or Inhumanity. Mm -hmm. um, Black Bolt is on the cover of Infinity Number 3 this week, looking very angry, yeah. as usual. Um, but God, yeah, this it's is just... also got, uh, some great Kirby Thor stories in there with the yep, Inhumans. Yep, yep. And, most importantly, <laughs> Not Brandek. If you don't know what Not Brandek is, there is the internet. Um... The biggest book I've ever seen <laughs> from Brian Ralph, uh, creator of cave -In and Daybreak, both of which were fantastic, like, teenage kind of adventure books. Um, that really had a first-person perspective that kind of drew you into it. This is kind of a take, uh, it's like Mega Man meets, you know, Astro Boy filtered through an American who loves manga. Um, and Reggie 12 is this kind of, you know, he's, he's a pretty good robot, but his, you know, <laughs> his, his, his uh, creator is a bit aloof, and, you know, there's a little bit of problems. He needs, a, a, you know, a cat sidekick, because every robot needs a cat sidekick. Um, speaking of cats, we've got more of the how to train, you know, or how to, uh, how to teach talk your, to your cat about, cat about gun control. And so if you pick that up in this one, I mean, your cat will know what to do if and when it finds a gun or, you know, a giant robot. Exactly. Because that happens all the time in dark Cat house. preparedness is necessary. It's totally. Oh, absolutely. All right. And why don't we finish off this week with a huge debut from Image here. This is Alice Cott's Zero Number One. It's telling the story of Edward Zero, who is a government killing machine. Great occupation. Pays a lot. 
Um, this first issue sees him in the middle of, I think it's like Afghanistan. Well, the first, like, the, it, there's some weird time travel stuff going on. The first page takes place in 2038. Second page pa takes place in 2018. So, uh, anybody familiar with Arlish Scott's work, uh, Change, or the Suicide Squad recently, is trippy. It's weird. Yeah. It doesn't... It's a bit incoherent. It doesn't go from A to B. To, it doesn't even go from, like, A to D. It goes from, like, A to L to, like, a fraction, and then back, and maybe some <laughs> Latin involved. Um, but uh, he's really... It's it's really... I don't know, he's a very intelligent kind of guy, and he brings a lot to comics. He's into a lot of stuff other than just comics, which always makes for good psychedelic comics. Um, you have cover. Awesome cover by Chris Burnham. Uh, Michael Walsh doing the art. There will be rotating artists on here, and... Uh, most notably, Trad Moore will be doing, oh, I think, issue really? four. Or I some of issue heard four. About that. That's yeah. Um, but yeah, Michael Walsh and Jordy Belair. Um, yeah, gritty, violent. Amazing. Basically, the whole book is one really long fight scene yeah. through a destroyed village. And he even uses the first and last page. I mean, this is full book. There's no ads. There's not even house ads in here. Mm. No, nothing. So, zero. It's already out of print. There's three different covers. Buy all three. They're yellow. They're shiny. You know. Also this week, we got in, of course, more villain variants. Oh, yes. Shiny evilness. Oh, yes. That, uh, I sound like crazy, you know? If you people want your shiny stuff, I mean, I get here before noon. Unless you want Superman. We got lots. We got lots of Superman. But everything else, we're pretty tight on. Um, and I think with that, you know, we'll, uh, we'll leave you with these nice farewell from our friends from the 90s. Star, Bye. Cable, we will meet again one day. You will see this. We will have these in the store. I'm never taking this off. No, never. Mm -mm. He's gonna work like that. It's gonna be creepy. He's gonna poke little holes in the eyes. Cool. Well, thanks, guys. We'll see you next week. Thanks for watching.